Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Thing YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 974, sub array sums divisible by k. Before we get into the video, if you guys are enjoying this content, leave a like and a comment. Helps me a ton with the YouTube algorithm. All right. Given an integer array nums and an integer k, return the number of non-empty subarrays that have a sum divisible by k. And the subarray is a contiguous part of an array. So let's look at an example here where we have nums 4, 5, 0, minus 2, minus 3, 1, and k equals 5. So basically, we want to find some subarray here uh, such that its sum is divisible by 5, aka a multiple of 5. So there's actually, um, you know, quite a few. So let's start with the most basic one, which is 0. Oops, let me pick a different color here because you guys can't actually see the whites. And let's go with green. Okay, so obviously 0 uh, is a multiple of 5 because 0 times 5 is zero, right? So, you know, it's, it's like five, uh, so zero. Uh, we could also have minus two and minus three because that's, um, you know, negative five. Obviously that's five times negative one. Um, we could have five, zero, minus two, uh, minus three, because again, this is zero uh, and that's a multiple of five. So I'm not gonna go through building all of them because there's quite a lot. Um, but essentially that's the gist, right? We want to find subarrays such that they um, sum to zero. Now, the trick here is actually how do we do this in an, in, in an efficient manner, right? Because we could generate every single possible subarray and then take its sum and see if that's a multiple of five, but that's going to be horrendously inefficient. We want to do this in, you know, somehow that it's actually not going to kill us on oops sorry not going to kill us on the runtime complexity is it possible to actually do this in one pass and the answer is yes what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to wipe all of this away and then talk about how we can actually solve this in a one pass uh, solution manner so let's clean this up and talk about it so after looking at the basic example we want to find an efficient way to do this. And unfortunately, the solution for this problem is one of those where if you've seen it before, it makes sense. If you haven't, figuring out on your own is probably not going to be that easy. So let's think about what happens when you have a sum. So let's look at the numbers 3 and 23. What is the difference between them? The difference between them is obviously 20, uh, which is a multiple of 5. So you know, any subarray that has a sum of three and then a sum of 23 between them, that means that between these two subarrays, that one sums to three, the other one sums to 23, somewhere in the middle, we have a multiple of, um, you know, 20, uh, we have multiple of five. And the reason that this works and what it actually motivates our solution is that um, if we think about modulos here, um, we will essentially see how to actually solve this problem. So what is three modulo five? It is obviously the, the remainder here is just three because uh, we can't actually put three uh, five into three. What about for 23? So 23 modulo five, obviously 20, uh, five can go into 23 four times and then there's a remainder of three. So you'll notice that when two numbers are actually uh, some multiple of K, that number, so some number modulo k, will have another match whose, um, you know, whose also num modulo k is the same value. So both of these are three in this case. And for that reason, the distance between them is some multiple of k. And this works for really any number. So we could do 1 and 21. What is 1 modulo k in this case? 5. This is going to be 1. And then 21 modulo 5 is going to be 1 as well. So that means that between them, there is a subarray, which is a multiple of 5, right? So between 1 and 21, obviously, there's 20. So if there was a subarray whose sum was actually 1 and a subarray whose sum was 21, then we know between them, obviously, there is 20, which is a multiple of k. So that's essentially what we're looking for. Uh, like I said, coming up with this on your own probably isn't going to happen. Um, the way that we actually want to solve this question is that we're going to be using a prefix sum here. And what we want to do with the prefix sum is essentially we're going to have a prefix sum and this is going to be set to zero. We're going to have a count, which is going to be set to zero. 
and we're gonna have a dictionary which is gonna be keeping track of how many times we've seen that uh, that remainder uh, essentially so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep track of it so every number we see we're gonna add it to the prefix sum so obviously we'd see four first uh, and then we would check is four modulo five in the dictionary uh, so is four basically in the dictionary it's not so we're gonna add it and we're gonna say that we've seen one subarray with a, uh, you know with you know that four as its remainder then we would add the next number so now it's nine and then we're gonna say okay what's nine modulo um, you know five right so nine modulo five if we think about it this is just going to be what four as well right so this is four which means that between these two values that there is a subarray whose length uh, is a multiple of five which makes sense right it's this five so between here there is this one subarray so since we have seen one element now um, we can essentially add that to our result. so our count becomes one um, and then we are good there so now what we want to do is we'd want to increment our count because now we've seen another uh, subarray whose length of uh, basically four so we're going to increment the count so it becomes two here we get a next value so we now have what uh, this subarray here which is zero uh, and then the count still nine so we're going to check do we have nine modulo five which is again four we do so now there's um, you know two subarrays we could do here so we want to add that to our result so we have three subarrays um, now what we want to do is we want to keep going forward so we now add this to our result so three uh, here again and what we want to do is now we get to minus two so this becomes negative seven uh, sorry becomes seven apologies uh, so seven modulo five is going to be what it's going to be two so two we haven't seen before so we're going to put this into our uh, array here or into our dictionary and we've seen it once then we get to the minus three so minus three here would mean we're at four so have we seen four modulo five equals four yes we've seen it a total of what three times so we're going to add that to our solution so now our solution is six and then uh what do we want to do so now we get to um our one here which is a five so this is where an interesting edge case happens and i'm glad that this happened so we have five modulo five which is zero if we were to look in our dictionary we wouldn't actually add anything to our um, result here but that's wrong because obviously it's five this if we were to add up this entire array it adds up to five so how can we not do anything this is one of the edge cases that we need to take care of and the way that we're going to do this is actually when we initialize our count dictionary we actually need to initialize zero uh, with a count of one to account for this case that zero won't be in there so if we ever get one where it is directly a multiple of five we won't have that previous value to look back on which is why we need to initialize it and we would correctly add a one here and that would equal seven uh, total and we can kind of verify this and let's kind of just go through and sanity check this one uh, so let me clear all of this up here and we'll actually sanity check that we get seven uh, total subarrays. So, oops, I uh, didn't want to do that. So just in case you guys don't believe me, the, the target we're looking for is seven. So let's see if we can figure out seven of them. Well, uh, zero is a multiple of five because zero times um, zero, zero times five is zero. So that's good, so that's one of them. What's another one we could do? Uh, we could do minus two and three, that's negative five. So that's a multiple of five what's another one we could do well we could do zero minus two and minus three so basically this one here so that is minus five again oops so that one's fine so that's number four uh number three so for number four uh we could just have the five on its own so that's fine so there we go we have five and we have um for the fifth one we could do the five and the zero because that would obviously still be five so that is number five what about number six um we could have the subarray remember we could have five zero minus two minus three so let's see five zero minus two minus three there we go that is obviously sums up to zero 
And then remember we said that the sum of the entire one was actually um, five. So we could have, uh, sorry, four, five, zero. Oops, okay, that's a little bit messy. Uh, four, oops, mm, four, five, zero, minus two, minus three, and one. That is the last one because this adds up to five. So that is actually the seven. And remember that we just got seven from our approach. So we have sanity checked that we actually were able to find all of them. So we know that our approach works. Again, this is one of those where if you've not seen it before, you're probably not going to come up with it. But the second you've seen it, um, you understand how it works and everything should just click. Unfortunately, it's just one of those questions. I really don't like it either, but it is what it is when it comes to Lee code. Um, so that being said, let's actually go to the code editor and type it up. We now have the general intuition, so this should be really easy. I'll see you in the editor momentarily. Okay. So we're back in the code editor. Let's type this up. So let's define our uh, simple variables first. So we're going to say the running sum uh, is going to equal to the count. And these are both zero in the beginning. Now we need our dictionary. So we're going to say remainders, and this is going to equal to a default dictionary default, actually, we'll just write collections default dict to be um, precise. Uh, and then obviously, we want, um, you know, a count of zero in the beginning. So we use int for that with a default dictionary. So that will give us a default count of zero if the key doesn't exist, which is what we want. Now remember, we have that edge case that we need to take care of with the remainders, um, we need to insert into our remainders dictionary for the zeroth key, a count of one. And if you remember to that example where we had a sum, uh, which was actually five, five modulo five was zero. But when we looked for that key in our uh, dictionary, it didn't exist, which was wrong because obviously that subarray sums to five and therefore we should add one to our result, but we weren't because the key doesn't exist. And this is how you get around that. You absolutely need this. Without this, the question, um, you're gonna get a wrong result. So make sure you remember to add this. Otherwise, we just wanna go through our array index by index and uh, get our numbers here. So what we want to do is we're going to say for num uh, in uh, nums. What we're going to do is we're going to say running. Uh, we're going to add it to our, um, add our number to the running sum. Uh, pretty straightforward. Oops. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to check if running modulo k is actually in remainders then that means that, um, you know, we have something like one, a remainder of one, uh, sorry, we had a number like one, and then maybe we have now 21, right, where one modulo five, uh, for our example, is going to be one, and 21 modulo five is also going to be one, which means that the distance between them is going to be, um, you know, five, uh, it's gonna be 20, which is a multiple of five. So this is the way that we get them. So we have if running modulo k is in remainders, then we want to say count, we're going to add to count whatever remainders of running uh, modulo k is. And uh, oh, this should be lowercase k. Sorry about that lowercase k. And then we want to update our remainders. Now that we've seen an extra uh, count for that, we want to add it, right? So we want to say running modulo k, okay. we want to increase the count by one. And that's all we need to do. At the end, we simply return count and we're good to go. Just want to make sure I haven't made any stupid syntax mistakes and we're good to go. All right, let's launch it. And what happened? Accepted. Perfect. Okay, so uh, time and space complexity, really straightforward time complexity wise. Obviously, we're just going over uh, each number in nums. And all we're doing is a dictionary uh, lookup and potentially incrementing a value. So that's just going to be a big O of n um, for the actual time for this place. It's also going to be big O of n uh, because we have to store these remainders and the number of remainders we store will depend on the number of elements in nums and um, you know just how the you know, I guess the dice falls in terms of what sort of remainders we get. If they're all unique, then it's going to be big O of n in that worst case. So. That's how you solve uh, subarray sums divisible by k. Like I said, this sort of question um, where you're using prefix sums comes up a lot. And this one's quite annoying because if you haven't seen it, um, knowing to do the remainders is a bit tricky to come up with your, on your own, especially this remainders uh, where we want to initialize the key to have a count of one, that's easily missable. 
uh, if you've never seen this before, but intuitively it makes sense, right? Like obviously if we have a sum of one, it doesn't matter what's really between it. If we get to something like 21, obviously the difference here is 20, which is a multiple of, um, uh, of k, if k is, you know, for our example, which was five, right? So that's generally the intuition. We don't really care what's between it as long as now we have two elements that the difference is a multiple of k, um, then we're good to go. And the way we track that is with the remainders. So hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, once you see this once, you'll understand how it works. Otherwise, good luck coming up with this on your own unless you're really smart. Uh, I definitely didn't. I had to look at the solution and that's totally fine. Uh, that's really part of the game with leak code. A lot of the times you're not going to be able to figure it out on your own. Uh, most of us just aren't that smart. We need to look at the solution. And th the thing is, you just want to understand the solution. And once you have that, then it should be all right going forward. Anyway, that's enough of a philosophical rant. Um, that's yeah not related to the question. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, uh, leave a like and a comment it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, especially if you made it to the end of my uh, philosophical rant there, maybe leave a comment like I made it to the end. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to join a discord community where we talk about all things Fang, um, you know, interview prep, system design, you can have your resume reviewed, you can ask for referrals. If that sounds interesting to you, I'll leave a link in the description below. I hope to see you there. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.